وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We've spoken about eight ways in which low aspiration comes about or eight different forms of low aspiration. Inshallah ta'ala today we're going to go into the ninth which is al-ishtighalu bima la ya'ni wal-insirafu amma ya'ni Preoccupying yourself with, busying yourself with that which does not concern you and leaving off that which does concern you. You find a lot of people, they are very concerned and they're dwelling and discussing and talking about that which does not concern them. And they leave off that which does concern them, that is important for them, that they should be doing. They leave off those things. And this is madhar min madahiri dunu hima. It shows that this person has low aspiration because high aspiration is that you focus on what brings you benefit and gets rid of any harm from you. Low aspiration is that you're concerned with other people's personal affairs and your own affairs are all over the place. وَهَذَا الْعَمَلُ This action is فُضُولٌ يُضَيُّعُ بِهِ الْإِنسَانُ وَقْتَ You're destroying your time, the most valuable thing that a person is given, which is his time. You're destroying that. You're getting rid of time. Just like that. And it's one of the greatest things. Wealth goes and comes. Money, you can get it if you lose it. Like in time that goes, you can never get it back. It's gone, done and dusted. You know, you are no longer going to receive and get that time again. So wasting it is wasting a part of yourself. Because all you are is time that came together. That's what you are. So when you waste your time in those things that don't concern you, you're really, in essence, destroying yourself. The most important thing for you is your own time. This shows that this person who's concerning himself with that which does not concern him, and leaving off that which does concern him, it shows that this person has low aspiration. It shows that this person is deficient in his intellects. It shows that this person has desires. It does. وَحِينَمَا يَعْجِزُ الْإِنسَانُ عَنْ مِلْءِ وَقْتِهِ فِرَاغِهِ بِمَا يَعْنِهِ When a person is lazy from filling his time with that which is important for him and that which will benefit him, that which does concern him, he goes about doing, filling his time with that which doesn't concern him. From the things that show this is that indulging into lahwun walaib, playing around too much, laughing around too much, going on social media and watching uh, small clips, what they call vines, the person watches a 30 second vine or whatever seconds it takes. The person is on Instagram. The person is on, is on Snapchat. The person is on Twitter. The person is on Facebook. Watching all of those things all day, one after the other, one after the other, one after the other. And hours go by. And if you ask him, what did you do? He'll say, I, I don't know. I was just chilling. Honey, what do you mean I'm just chilling? What did you do today? He doesn't know. Ludalika, this subhanAllah, I used to think before when someone was asked, what did you do? He says, yeah, nothing. I used to think to myself, what do you mean I didn't do nothing? But it's true, he didn't do nothing. But Ludalika, there's a kitab called, um, a very important book, I encourage you all to read it, inshallah ta'ala, it's beneficial. It's, beneficial. it's written by Sheikh Hussein Al-Awaisha. Al-Awaisha. It's one of the students of Sheikh Al-Bani. I don't know how 
his last name is mentioned or read. Um, he has a kitab called Al Madhariyatul Jawfa wa Atharuha fi Dimari Um fi Dimari Al Ummah. Just focusing on your outer appearance and giving so much importance to that, the evil effects that it has on the Ummah. He wrote a book on that. Even though we spoke about that in our previous episode, some matters related to it, we're going to mention it today as well. Again, from the things he mentions is the person concerns himself with that which does not concern him. وَاشْتِغَالُ الْإِنسَانُ بِمَا لَا يَعْنِيهِ لَهُ أَوْ شِبْهُهُ بَلْ إِنَّهُ لَا يَقِفُ عِنْدَ كَوْنِهِ مُضَيِّعَةً لِلْوَقْتِ بِمَا لَا يَنْفَعُ فَحَسْبُ بَلْ رُبَّمَا زَادَ عَلَى ذَلِكَ فَكَانَ ضَرَرًا عَلَى صَاحِبِهِ فِي, جس في جِسْمِهِ أَوْ عَقْلِهِ أَوْ دِينِهِ أَوْ عِرْضِهِ أَوْ نَفْسِهِ Some people, they're not just preoccupied with that which does not concern them, but rather he wastes his time in that which does not benefit him. Rather he may even go overboard in doing things that will physically harm him or intellectually harm him or even harm his religion or his honor or his nafs. He'll do things like that. And from the things that fall under here, الْإِشْتِغَالُ بِمَا لَا يَنْفَعْ أَمَا إِشْتِغَالُ بِمَا لَا يَعْنِهِ Busying yourself with that which does not concern you is أَنْ يَغْتَابَ أَخَاهُ الْمُؤْمِنِ You sit down and you just gossip about people's personal life. You're backbiting one person from another person to another person. You're always just you have nothing else in life, so you have to find yourself a job. You have to find yourself find something to do. So what does a person do? He sits about and he gossips, talks about people. Um, you know, have you heard of so and so? Yeah, this person. Yeah, this person. This person. Yeah, this person. This person. What might he like And he busies himself with bin namimati wal ifsad, tail bearing, going to one person saying, "Akhi, do you know what so and so said about you? You don't know? You never heard? Skin. May Allah make it easy for you, Akhi. Whoa, he spoke about you. I don't know where to start from." Where should I start from? And then he goes in. One goes again, goes after that and speaks and says, well, I don't know if I want to, I don't want to cause any problems between you two, but all I'm trying to say to you is you need to get your rights, Akhi. What do you mean? I don't want to cause any problem. And then you say you need to get your rights. You are causing problem. The fact that you brought the problem to the person. So this is what he does. Tell Barry in the cloak of being a sincere, loving يعني, person. And you have to, Underline this as a principle, as a qa'ida. Anyone who comes up to you and talks about other people to you, says, Akhi, you know so-and-so, yeah? Akhi, you know so-and-so. Then remember they talk about you as well. Learn that as a principle, as a qa'ida. There's a Somali saying, they have the so uh, there's a Somali saying, which they say, ko shekeyo, ka shekeyo. Which basically means, he will talk to you and he will talk about you. As much as he says things about other people in front of you, he'll say the same things about you when you turn your back on him. So don't be a person whose time is so irrelevant. You're, you see your time to be so irrelevant that you busy yourself with other people's lives. And a lot of people do that because they can't live their own life. They want to live other people's lives. They're looking at other people's lives. I call them the backseat drivers. Yeah, they want they want to control everything, but they don't want to go forward. You know, so and so. Yeah, he shouldn't have said that. He shouldn't have done this. Why does he? And actually, you busy yourself with your umur and your aila and your family. Maybe you have a father who's not a Muslim, or you have a uh, uh, and some of your family members are not practicing the deen. Your own children are probably on the streets. Your own wife is mutabarrija, for example. Your own house is not in order. You have t internal problems. Just focus on that. You know, just busy yourself with that. And leave of these people you're gossiping about and you're talking about. You yourself don't know how to pray the salah properly. Like the man who walked into the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu And when he walked into the masjid, he gave the salam to the Prophet Sallallahu after he prayed and the Prophet said to him, Irja' fa salli fa inna kalam tu salli. Go back and pray, you haven't prayed. The man went and he prayed. And he came back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Irjit fa salli fa inna kalam tu salli. Again, second time. Go back and pray. You haven't prayed. The third time the man came and he said, Assalamu Alaikum Ya Rasulullah. And the Prophet said, Irjit fa salli wa fa inna kalam tu salli. He said, Alaikum Assalam. Go back, pray. You haven't prayed. And then the, messenger, the man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah. After three times, he said, Ya Rasulullah. Walladhi ba'athaka bil haqqi nabiyya la uhsinu ghayra hadha fa'allimni. I swear by the Lord who sent you out as a messenger. I can't pray better than this. Teach me. And then the Prophet ﷺ educated him, taught him how to pray. 
There are many people who are gossiping about other people's personal lives, talking about it, this, 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 this. They have never finished the Quran. And the people they're talking about have finished the Quran. They're talking about people who are holding on to their religion, personally, in private and public. They're holding on to their religion with their families. They're trying to nurture their children. They're trying to keep good relationship with their parents. They're trying to take care of their neighbors and those who are closest to them. He, you're, you're not doing half of that. You gossip about them. You go online, you say this, you say that about them. And you have to just remember that what are you going to do Yawm Al-Qiyamah when you come and you become a Muflis? A Muflis means a person who's bankrupt. The Prophet Sallallahu said to the Sahabas, he said, manil muflis. Do you know the person who's a Muflis? And they said, Ya Rasulullah, Al-Muflis fina man la dinara lahu wa la dirham. The Muflis is the one who has no dinar or he has no dirham. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Muflisu, the Muflis in my Ummah is the person who comes. He insulted so-and-so. He has slandered so-and-so. He has hit so-and-so. He's taken the wealth of so-and-so. And the day of judgment, he's going to come. And those people he's wronged are going to be standing there waiting for him. They take all of his good deeds. All of the hard work that he put in, they're just going to be taking it. You see? And then when his good deeds finish, those people are not going to forgive you. What are they going to do to you? They're going to start giving you their sins. They're going to say, Ya Rabbi, I still have more. He's been, he's been backbiting me even longer than that. Ya Rabbi, I still need more. But you have nothing to offer them because all your righteous deeds has been taken from you. So what happens? They give you all of their sins. If that's the amount. Or they give you some of their sins. Are you able to do that, brother? Are you able to do that, sisters? And this is something very common amongst the women. It's a matter that's very common amongst women that they sit down and they gossip about another sister. And I remember one time, a sister came into the masjid. She came to do a dars. She wants to benefit. She wants to learn the deen of Allah. But she has a history. She has a past. Things that she's done in the past. But she's repented. And a person who repents in Islam, what does the deen believe regarding a person who repents? The one who repents has never done that sin in Islam. The one who repents is like he's never done that sin before. You can't hold the person account for the past if he says to you, I repented. And the people have to understand this, brothers. If a person says to you, I did that in the past, that is the past. I am the children, I'm from the progeny of Adam. Adam. I am khatta, I'm a sinner, I doom sins, and I repented. You then come and you say, ah, look, sister, didn't you say this and this and this? But she says to you, or the brother says to you, I repented. Holding a person account for something they repented from, wallahi, shows how evil you are as a person. If the person repented from that mistake, Allah is saying to you, the messenger is saying to you, that that person's sin is forgiven, cleared off the record. You have no rights to bring that up again. You're not allowed to? Bring it. Even in the Quran, when Allah Taala talks about the man speaking to his wife when she when she's um, when there's a conflict between the two of them, and she's in the wrong, for example, and the husband speaks to the wife and tells her fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The wife then she repents from her mistake. She says, "You know what? I realized I was wrong. I wronged you, honey. I wasn't meant to say this to you. I wasn't meant to." She she, she asks her husband for forgiveness, and she says, I, I, "I'm, I've." come back to my senses and I should have never done this and I should have never said this and I should have never acted in this way. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran that the man should never come, the husband should never come and bring back the past to that woman and say, hey, listen, every time he feels the need to um, flex his uh, energy or strength, he reminds her of that moment and says, you know what, as an anchor, are you not, you not the person who said this? That's why Allah says in the ayah, فَإِنْ أَطَعْنَكُمْ فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ السَّبِيلَ مَا مَعْنَى فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ السَّبِيلَ If they obey you, فَلَا تَبْغُوا عَلَيْهِنَّ السَّبِيلَ Don't use this issue of the past against them. And that's what tends to happen from so many, so many people. So the sister, she came to the masjid, she wanted to practice the deen, she had a past, she repented. No one has that, no one, كَائِنًا مَنْ كَانَ has any rights to bring that past back. We're happy. We want Jannah for everybody. Is that not the case? This person repented. We're so happy. We're joyful that a Muslim today walked into the masjid is, is, is taking the deen serious. 
we should be so happy and over the uh, over the moon. So the sister comes in and she sits down and she comes. We have ill, sick-minded individuals in the community. And it's always something you'll see. They started to gossip about her. They started to mention things about her. They started to, Danny, all around her, they're talking, but they're never coming to her. They all talk about her gossip, this, that, that, that. They're even passing on some of the past things that she did in her past. They're passing on in groups, WhatsApp groups. And the sister just cousin can't keep up with it anymore. So she takes, she leaves off. And the place where she should have felt home, she should have been welcomed. She should have been shown, Alhamdulillah, we're happy you're part of, you're with us. Those people, what are they going to say to Allah Yawm Al Qiyamah when they stand in front of Him? When they've spread ghiba and namima and ifsad. Another example, and I'm mentioning these things because the situation calls for it. Another example is a wife and a husband. For example, they have a conflict and the husband has committed a sin in the past, for example. And the sin, for example, gets exposed to this community. Okay? The husband repents. The wife acknowledges that her husband repented. She acknowledges it. The wife and the husband, they sort out their problem. The sin is now rectified by repentance. And Alhamdulillah, everything is reassured. The husband repented. He mentioned that this is not going to happen from him again. And guess what? The community are bringing it up. Who are they truly going to hurt? They're going to hurt the wife. Because her husband, his sins and his shortcomings, you're destroying a family. They have kids for each other. Gossiping about this issue. They've repented. I mean, the man has repented from that sin. He's with his wife now. He's left that sin. He's left that wrongdoings. And he, it reminds me of the hadith of the woman who came to the Prophet wasallam and she repented. And she committed zina before that. And she had a child from the wedlock at the time of the Prophet wasallam. And this woman, when she committed the zina and the Prophet wasallam prayed on her, the janazah. Okay? He prayed the janazah on her, alayhi salatu wasalam. Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya Rasulullah, it was salli alayha wa qad zanat. Are you going to pray on this woman and she committed zina? And, he, and this woman, she mentioned that she committed zina. It's not that. Umar is just saying that. She acknowledged that she came to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, I committed zina. She told the Prophet that she committed zina. This woman, the Prophet is praying janazah on her. He wants to pray janazah on her. Umar said, Atusalli alayha wa qad zanat. Are you going to pray salah on this woman and she's committed zina? The messenger then said to Umar, Innaha tabat. This woman repented. Tawbah, a repentance. Law qusimat ala sab'ina min ahli al-madinati wa sa'atum. This woman repented a repentance that if that repentance was dispersed and divided among 70 people of Medina, she would overcome it. Ponder here and contemplate. 70 people of Medina, if the repentance of this woman was divided amongst them, she would overcome it. How she repented, the type of repentance that she came with. So many people today don't understand that concept. Sometimes, some people in their lives, it's the sin that they do that, bring them, that brings them close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A sin that they did became a turning point. They repented a repentance that turned them around in their life that brought them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it fair then you keep bringing it up? The true sinner would not be that person who repented. The sinner would be the one who is still mentioning it and talking about it. Fattakullah ya ibadallah. Fear Allah in what you say about others and the way you speak about others and the people's honor that you talk about. Wallahi, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's not going to be dinar and dirham in the day of judgment. It's not going to be penny and pounds that's going to be taken from you, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. It's going to be, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it's going to be hasanat. People are going to take your righteous deeds. People are going to say, Ya Rabbi, he backbited me. He spoke about me. I want my deeds. He spoke about me. I want my deeds. There are times in the religion that Nawawi we mentioned six times when backbiting is permissible. Anything other than those six times in the Sharia, you're not allowed to backbite someone. And you're not allowed to speak about the people. If you have high aspiration, your life is not about other people's lives. Your life is about yours. You live your life. You're going to be questioned in your grave, not about Alan and Fulan. You're going to be questioned about you and what your position in the religion is. You're going to be asked about yourself. 
it shows you have low aspiration. وَمِنْ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَشْتَغِلَ نَفْسَهُ بِالْقِيلِ وَالْقَالِ Busying yourself with so and so said this and so and so said this. Some people they are masters; they know everything that's happening in the community. They know everything that's happening in the community. They they mastered it. Yeah, so and so said this. Yeah, yeah, I know that. I know that. وَكَثْرَةُ السُّؤَالِ Asking too many unnecessary questions. Why are you asking a person about their life? Why do you why are you so concerned about other people's lives? Well, إِغْرَاقِ بِالْمِرَاءِ وَالْجِدَالِ Indulging and plunging into debates and argumentation. There's some people just everything is a debate. Akhi, just listen and take it. Why are you always arguing for? You were told it's haram, khalas. You haven't got the knowledge to understand the discussion that the scholars are having in this matter. Stop using khilaf as a way out. You don't understand the khilaf aslan. The evidence that this person brought to you, just take it and stick to that. Stop arguing. Stop Honey, arguing and debating is not for you. You are a person who hasn't got any understanding of the religion. Okay? You have no understanding. Just blind follow. Listen to what the Imam is telling you. Listen to the Shaykh, what he's telling you. Khalas, just take it and go home. Stop arguing with the Shaykh. Stop debating with him. It was mentioned that Najat al Haruri used to come to Abdullah ibn Abbas. Always debate with Ibn Abbas. Every time would come to Ibn Abbas and he say, Ibn Abbas, I want to debate with you. Or Ibn Abbas would say something and he would come and he would debate with him. And Ibn Abbas hated him. And he was, he's one of the figureheads of the Khawarij. Scholars, they mentioned that if Najdat al-Haruri was to leave off argumentation and debating and just listen to Ibn Abbas, he would have benefited a lot from it. One of the things that prevented him from benefiting from Ibn Abbas was the concept of al bil mirai wal jidal? He was excessively debated. Who is debates? Loves argumentations. Have you not seen a group? Of, have you not seen people? A group of people who just when you say something, always turns out into a debate. Always an argument. You don't. You sometimes think, how did I? How did we get into this argument again? It just turns out to be an argument. That's their character. Like in the person who has high aspiration, the truth for them is a lost property. They're going to take it. They listen and say, hey, repeat that again. Let me hear that again. Ah, Wallah, you've got a point. Jazakallah khair, and I'm going to take that on board. They don't argue too much. That doesn't mean everybody who tells you something, just listen and take it on board. Of course, question them if you feel like you need to know more about it. And if you have the ability to discuss the issue, of course, you've got the rights to discuss it. Keeping in mind who the person is. If he's a teacher, maybe it's another way to talk about it. If it's a friend and a colleague of yours and you're discussing it in a healthy, healthy uh, manner and you're trying to benefit from one another or what you're trying to see is that if this person can give you more benefits from it, then no problem. Like in Al-Mirai Wal-Jidal, every time you just want to argue and have ghalab and saytara, this really shows that there is a, there's a, in this person, dunul him, low aspiration. Because all it is for you is me, Anna, me. And there's some people who are always like that. Whenever you come to them and you say, Habibi, Barakallahu Feek, may Allah honor you, there is one thing in your life I think you should rectify. This particular thing. They have what is known as the victim syndrome. There's a group of people, they suffer from what is known as the victim syndrome. What does that mean? It means Every single time they are corrected, they play the victim card. Ya akhi, my life. Ana wallahi. Everyone just likes to bully me. People don't know the suffering I go through in life. They don't know how I got this. Ya, all the time, victim syndrome. You're always the victim of everything. And this shows dunul himma. Don't play the victim card all the time. And I've been oppressed. And I've been manipulated into this. And this is really not who I am. Wallahi, this person wronged me. And you don't sit down and ask yourself, you know, I'm, I might be wrong. I might be in the wrong. I, this person mentioned something valid. They brought evidence. They brought proofs. You, every situation, you always use that card because that's your way out of everything. That's your way to deal, your coping mechanism. That's how you deal with issues. That shows you suffer from low aspiration. You don't have ulul 
person has ulul himma, he's going to take it. If the person brings a valid point, he'll take it. And he'll say, Akhi, Jazakallah khairan, I'm taking it out on board. I know that is me, and I'm going to take it from you. Jazakallah, I'll rectify that. I'll work on it. Another, but if you, start, if you consistently bring out that red card, huh? every time, victim syndrome. Again, when another measure, I'm the victim of all of this. You are a person who's never going to lift their head up. And the first enemy that you have is yourself. And you're the one that's going to plunge yourself into destruction and turmoil. And until you lift yourself up, push yourself up and you stand up and you take accountability for your own actions. You start taking accountability for your wrongdoings. You blame yourself for what you did was wrong and you then work to the solutions that, that you know are out there. That's success now. You're a successful person. You're a success seeker. Don't always just be a fail avoider. That you're a person who avoids failure. Do not be in any way, shape or form a person who always wants to be sympathy. sympathy. Just, every time you're wrecked, you just cry and you think that's your way out. Accountability. Umar what did he say? Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. Waziruha qabla an tuhasabu. Account yourself. Allah told us in the Quran, Ya lidhina amanu attaqullaha wal tawndur nafsum ma qaddamat lighad. Attaqullah. Account yourself. Question yourself. Interrogate yourself. Scale your deeds that you did for the day before it scaled for you the, the day of judgment. Victim syndrome, get rid of that. You will succeed in life. And you'll see the you see the light at the end of that tunnel, inshallah ta'ala. I'm going to stop there, inshallah ta'ala. If anything I said that was wrong, incorrect, slip of the tongue, it's from me and Shaytan, and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward? of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel. Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like, or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.